Hi, in this video we're going to look at a very important concept, unit conversion. It is uh, woven in the fabric of physics and engineering. It's some necessary uh, skill that we have to master. And so let's learn this through examples, okay? Uh, first of all, in your book, uh, in your textbook, the front and back inside cover have conversion factor table. So those are where you get to basic conversion, such as from foot to inch, you know, uh, we know foot to, one foot is 12 inch anyway, foot to meters, um, and you know, what else, Newton to pound force, uh, those basic concept. Now, let's look at example one. We have 17.9 inch, and we want to change that to meter. So we first we write down 17.9 inch, and then you want to get rid of inch, so you put inch at the bottom, and we desire meter, so meter on the top. Then we know from the book, one meter is 39.37 inch, so inch, inch cancel out, then that's our calculation. Or you can write down 17.9 inch, and get rid of inch, put at the bottom, meter on the top, However, here you can see one inch is 0 0.0254 meter. That's basically the same as one over 39.37. Okay, they give us the same answer. Now let's look at example two. We have 16 miles per hour changed to foot per second. They're both in the same dimension, which is velocity, right? And so we write down miles per hour in a fraction form. We want to get rid of miles, and instead we want the foot because they are in the same um, length dimension. One mile is 5 to 80 foot. So then we need to get rid of an hour. We want a second. One hour is 3,600 second. So hour and hour canceled out. Mile and mile canceled out. We got our foot per second. Okay. Example three. We have 60 watt and we want to change to horsepower. A quick review, watt and horsepower is in the dimension of power, right? We know power is, by definition, is energy divided by time. And energy is joule per second, so watt is joule per second. Joule is also force times distance, since energy is force times distance, so joule is Newton meter. So those are the quick review about the concept but for solving this problem we just need to get rid of watt and change the horsepower because one horsepower is 745.7 watt so put that cancel out we get our horsepower then the next example is we're going to change pound force to kilonewton so we are in the dimension of the force um, Copy 23.5 pound force down, and we know one pound is 4.448. So put 4.448 Newton on the top. You cancel out the pound force. We got our unit as Newton, but we want a kilonewton. So one kilonewton on the top is equal to 1,000 Newton. So we cancel that. We get our unit in kilonewton. Okay. Another example in the dimension of force. So this is given in kips, we want to change to Newton. One basic concept we need to know, one kip is kilopounds. Kips means kilopounds, that means 1,000 pound force. So one kips, change that, put the kilopounds, uh, kips at the bottom, we get pound force. Then, however, we want to change the pound force to Newton. We know from earlier, one pound force is equal to 4.448 Newton. So that cancel out. We have our desirable unit as Newton. 25.8 times 10 to the power of 3. Uh, then we need to know scientific notation. So that's 2.58 times 10 to the power of 4. Okay. Now let's look at another problem. This problem is unique is because this has power of 2. So 10 meters squared changed to foot square. So we copy 10 meters squared first, then we know 1 meter is 3.28 foot, and then however we have to square. When you square that up, you have meter square, and don't forget this is 3.28 square foot square. So what your answer is, 3.28 square times 10 uh, square foot, okay, that gave us 107.584.
So in the same line of work, instead of area, now we have a volume. 10 meter cube changed to foot cube. You already know you have to do 3.28 cube, right? Let's, let's look at it in detail. So 1 meter is 3.28 foot and it cubed up. So when you expand it, you have meter cube here and you have 3.28 meter cube and foot cube. The meter cube, meter cube cancel out. We got our desirable unit as cubic feet. All right, one, another example, let's see if we have one PSI. And we want to change that to kilopascal. All right. And we know this is in dimensional pressure, right? Quick review, pressure is going to be our force over area, right? Force over area, pressure is going to be in, uh, force is in Newton, area is in meter square. So in that situation, we have our, um, Pressure as in Pascal. Okay, now let's take a look. PSI, we're going to write down in fraction terms. So it's one pound force per square inch. We want to change that to kilopascal. Either you can just use a conversion from PSI to kilopascal directly, or you can change pound force to Newton and inch square to meter square. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little bit cumbersome way. All right, so let's take a look. We know one pound force have to be at the bottom so they can cancel out. One pound force is equal to 4.448, right? That's given, 4.448 Newton. So we have pound force get rid of and we have our Newton. Then we don't want an inch square because we want to get to meter square. We're going to get a Pascal. So we put the inch on the top, we put the meter at the bottom. Um, again, here you have square, so don't forget the power of two. One meter is how many, how many inch? Or one meter is 39.37. I took this number directly from your book. Okay, then we have to square it up. Now what do we have here? We have 4.448 Newton and have inch square, copy that down. And we have meter square expanding, 39.37 square and inch square. Now we get rid of inch square. We have our desirable units of Newton per meter square. That's our Pasca, right? So 4.448 times 39.37 square. But that's Pasca, so you can write it down that in Pasca. However, if we want to change that to kilopascal, we know we need to divide by 1,000. So Pasca at the bottom, kilopascal on the top, that's equal to 1,000 Pasca. So cancel out that, then we got our unit as kilopascal. So pause for a second, see what you have. So I have 6.89 kilopascal. All right, okay. Um, another quick uh, uh, concept is whenever you see mega, like for example, mega pasca, that means mega means 10 to the power of six pasca, okay. If you have kilopascal, that means 10 to the power of 3, 1,000 Pascal, all right? Um, let me think. How about gigapascal? Gigapascal means 10 to the power of 9 Pascal. So those prefix are very important to know. And on the contrary, if you have something less than 1, for example, if you have, if you have your... Let's see, uh, nanometer, that means 10 to the power of negative of 9 meter, okay? Then you have micrometer, that means 10 to the negative 6 meter. If you have a millimeter, that's 10 to the negative 3 meter because, well, it's or you can write down 1 meter is equal to 1,000 millimeter, or you can write down one meter 
is equal to ten to the power of six micrometer, right? Okay, so those are the basic concepts for unit conversion. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.